Hello friends, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at classicstoday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room and we're still working our way backwards through the alphabet. We're on the letter W, W-I actually, where we're gonna be for a little bit of time, I think. And I have three thingies here, or three groups of thingies. The first is a lovely disc of Johann Wilhelm Wilms. I mean, he's become something of a name lately. He lived from 1772 to 1847, which is really a pretty considerable period of time. I mean, and, you know, he, he, he you know, straddled the classical and the romantic eras. And we have two symphonies here, number six and number seven, with Concerto Cohen under Werner Erhardt. These are lovely works. I mean, they're, they're substantial works, 31 minutes, 29 minutes, and four big movements with, you know, normal things that we'd expect, like scherzos and post Beethoven, but remember, you know, one of the things about these people, you know, the Hummels and the Churneys and these, these, these the Cromers and the, the ones who outlived Mozart and maybe even outlived Beethoven and kind of came in the middle is that, is that their style, uh, Beethoven was so outside the norm. It's very difficult for us to sort of get our brain around it because we think Beethoven is Beethoven, right? But he's not what people were imitating not by and large, Ferdinand Ries, those people, they were imitating Haydn and Mozart. And Haydn and Mozart were the latest thing. Remember, Haydn was, Mozart were dead in the 1790s. So when you figure the next generation of composers was catching up to what they were doing, um, you know, they were, they were doing what Schubert was doing in his first symphonies, by and large. They were still working in that immediate post-classical style. And Beethoven was really a thing apart so it's wonderful to hear this music. There's some really fine composers writing in that style, but we tend to disregard them because we think, oh, well, you know, Beethoven was, he was so far, um, I wouldn't say ahead, but in his own world, um, comparatively speaking, that these guys were of their time. Beethoven was outside the universe in a way. So there's Wilms on archive, lovely disc. Nice, nice stuff. And here's something for really, Get, your, get your, your ears perked up. Meredith Wilson's Symphonies, a symphony of San Francisco and the missions of California. Now, Meredith Wilson, of course, was the guy who wrote The Music Man, the musical, and also the unsinkable Molly Brown. Yeah, he did that one too. Um, he was a flutist. He did all kinds of nifty stuff in his life, and he wrote two rather enjoyable, rather very enjoyable symphonies. Um, which I think I reviewed at classicstoday.com. You may want to take a look. So here they are on Naxos with the Moscow Symphony and William T. Stromberg, who does all that Naxos film music stuff. So he's just the person to do Meredith Wilson's concert music. Really a novelty, this disc. It really was. It was I kept it. And then finally, three discs, cheapy, cheapy reissue discs, by guitarist John Williams. Now, it's terrible that this John Williams has the same name as that other John Williams, isn't it? And you know, there's John Williams made a crap load of records, frankly. I mean, there's I have this enormous green box with I don't know how many CDs of his complete recordings for Sony, RCA, or whoever labels he was on. Well, Julian Bream was on RCA, right? And John Williams was the green box. I am not a fan of classical guitar. I know I've said it before, you know it. I think the guitar is the most limited solo instrument in the world. It's a lovely instrument to accompany songs, to do things like that, but as a solo instrument, it has real serious limitations in terms of expressive quality, sustaining power, the ability to play legato, and guitar records make me crazy because you always hear the fingers, you know, sliding up and down on the frets. You hear that squeaking, you know, it's, makes me crazy. So I'm very selective in having guitar music because frankly, the repertoire is rather small. Well, it's not true. The repertoire is enormous, but the standard repertoire for classical guitar is rather small. You know, a few pieces by Fernando Sor, some Moro Giuliani, and then the usual Spanish transcription stuff. That's what you get. Um, some of it is wonderful music, don't get me wrong, but I don't listen to guitar music very often. So we have the Spanish guitar music disc so that you have everything you've ever needed to have the Spanish guitar, and then we have um, the guitarist, John Williams, with Mikas Theodorakis and Carlo Domeniconi and Satie and Anonymous 
and John Williams owns stuff, his Aeolian suite for guitar and small orchestra, which is quite charming. And uh, Philip, Philip Houghton and Eric Satie again. So, you know, okay, who cares? And finally, Latin American guitar music. Well, we've got Augustine Barrios and Manuel Ponce, and that's basically all that's on here. Just these two guys. Yes, music by Barrios and Ponce. Of course, of course, there is great music. There is great music being written for the guitar, but we will get to that um, under the name of the respective composer. The greatest, of course, is Leo Brower, the Cuban composer, who is one of the few composers, I think, who, has, who is a great composer and who writes um, for the guitar in the most marvelous way, and I love his music, and so there's an exception to every rule, but we're not to the Bs yet. So those are the, those three in the letter W, and tune in for the next installment of Random Reviews from the Overflow Room. Keep on listening, friends, and thanks so much for joining me. Take care.